Ciao ragazzi, come state? Oggi impariamo l'imperfetto, the imperfect. Yay! So, the imperfect is another past tense. Um, as you can already see, so it's past and there'll be some keywords that I will teach you. So, it's another past tense and it has its own uses. The first thing we need to do though is learn how to conjugate it and then we'll learn when we use it. But I can let you know that it usually refers to general actions in the past or repetitive actions in the past, descriptions of actions in the past without a specific time connected to it, or setting in the past. So to conjugate the verb, you will take your infinitive, remove the re from the infinitive, and then add these endings. So, mangiare, you keep mangia, and you only remove the re, so then you'll have mangiavo, mangiavi, mangiava, mangiavamo, mangiavate, mangiavano. The cool thing about this tense is that there are only four main irregular verbs. So the crazy one is the verb to be essere, which looks very unusual. Ero, eri, era, eravamo, eravate, erano. Ero, eri, era, eravamo, eravate, erano. To be. Bere, to drink. Bevevo, bevevi, beveva, bevevamo, bevevate, bevevano. But if you remember the present tense, this one's not too off anyway. Dire, to say. Dicevo, dicevi, diceva, dicevamo, dicevate, dicevano. Dicevo, dicevi, diceva, dicevamo, dicevate, dicevano. Puoi fare? Facevo, facevi, faceva, facevamo, facevate, facevano. This one too, the present tense is faccio, so facevo. It's not too far off. So, a set of words that you often see connected to this verb are verbs of repetition. Like sempre, always, spesso, often, di solito, usually. Usualmente, usually, in generale, in general, per molti anni, for many years, molte volte, many times, tutti i giorni, all, all, every day, all the days, every evening, poi ogni giorno, every day, ogni mese, ogni sera, the sense of repetition, and then Mondays, Tuesdays, so you guys make it plural, we put the article in front, il lunedì, io andavo sempre a trovare la nonna, per esempio. You will often find in this tense openers such as da piccolo, when I was little, or da piccola, if you're a girl, quando ero piccolo, o c'era una volta, once upon a time. So why do I need to know another past tense, right? <laughs> so this one is the one that we use to describe actions in the past. So actions that are repeated, so I used to. Or while they are occurring, in general. Cosa facevi ieri alle tre? Or simultaneous parallel actions. Ieri studiavo mentre ascoltavo la musica. Or if you're making descriptions in the past for an emotion, for example, Luisa era felice ieri, you can't really pinpoint that. Or appearance, personality, uh, things, and, you know, for things and places, what they looked like maybe a nice scenery in the past, somebody's personality, and also the weather when you're describing it in general. So, so yesterday was a beautiful day. So also the category of weather could also be put into setting. So time. So it's not at for. At for, there's no verb. But when you say it was for, when, blah blah blah, then that becomes your setting, which is different. So when you have a verb connected to the time, you will use the imperfect. And then same with age. When I was three, quando avevo tre anni, giocavo con mia cugina. I played with my cousin. I once heard this uh, parallel to the imperfect and the theater. So if you think about the setting, everything that's already on the set, it will be there. So your character already has the white wig on, if that's an old person that they're describing. If the snow is falling, it's coming down for the weather. Uh, if you have a, uh, 
character who is young, then you'll have a young actor. And then the passato prossimo, which is the other past that you know, that one is all the represents all the specific details. Okay, so how do you remember? So these actions, descriptions, and settings. So I like the first chart because that's the uh, the the thinking one, uh, the conceptual one. But some of you really like mnemonic devices. So you could remember twas read. So you have time, weather, and wishes. Actions, repeated, described, and simultaneous. Then you have appearance and age. Setting. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Setting, like time and age. Repetition. Emotions. Descriptions. And dreams. So that could help uh, some of you remember all of this. So this is your mnemonic chart. So this is me when I was little. So if I were to describe what I would look like when I was little, I would say, avevo i capelli lunghi, uh, ero timida, per esempio. You can tell from my clothing <laughs> que, uh, I was living, uh, due, I was little during the 70s. <laughs> so I hope this helped and I hope you understood the imperfect. Buona giornata. Have a good day. Ciao.